Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the latest instalment of my bookshelf tour. So as I've said in the past, uh, basically I'm just slowly going through all of the books in my collection, and then I'm actually using like the lists that I make in the description below to then feed into my memoir. Biggie, stop making noise when I'm trying to film. Uh, we're almost near the end now. We're up to last in the last video we got up to Pullman, so we're going to continue here with the Middle Kingdom ride by Colin Pyle and Ryan Pyle, and then Tough Rides Brazil uh, just by Ryan Pyle. And basically Colin and Ryan went on this adventure so in the Middle Kingdom ride they went around China and then obviously in Tough Rides they went around Brazil and these just books are just sort of their travel writing they went around them on uh, motorbikes I think they became uh, they become yeah they got a Guinness World Record I think for being the first people to ride around China which is pretty cool I would send both of these for review they're all right they're not amazing but if you like the sound of the concepts like they certainly execute on the concepts you know okay then we have poems for a world gone to shit discover the amazing power of poetry to make even the most fucked up times feel better and this was all right the problem was it was just like pretty generic poetry so we got like Shelley Elliot Samuel Taylor Coleridge so some of Shakespeare from Macbeth there which is fine but for with a book with a title like this I was kind of expecting there to be more modern poetry more free verse poetry about because the world has gone to shit quite recently you know what I mean like it, it I know it was bad in Shakespeare's time but it wasn't like global extinction threat level bad you know what I mean so I don't know I feel like we, we sort of started that with the wars and then, you know, atomic bombs and the Cold War and now global warming and stuff. So I feel like there should have been more modern poetry represented in there. Here is Emoticons by Xavier Quattrochi Ubredos and Charles Baal, a marketing guide to communicating through emotions. This book is mainly notable for being the only book I own with an author whose surname begins with the letter Q. Uh, it was alright, a reasonably good non-fiction marketing book, you know? But if you're not a marketer, there's, there's not much point, is there? Okay, so here we have Duncan Ralston. So Duncan Ralston is one of the indie writers whose stuff I really like. He's kind of a horror author. We both actually used to be published by Forsaken, which was the horror imprint of Book Trope. Uh, that publisher no longer exists, but I still keep up to date with Ralston and what he's doing. So I've got a few of his here. So here we have Every Part of the Animal, which is like a novella here. There is no limit to what a mother will do to protect her child. And this was reminiscent of, you know, any thriller, really. Like your domestic thrillers like Gone Girl and Girl on the Train and stuff like that. But then with a horror edge to it as well. Small Town America. So if you're Harriet Rosie and you're watching this, you'll probably enjoy with this book and yeah it was just really well executed I thought it took this trend and took it in a new direction you know I don't tend to like thrillers that much and that one I did enjoy here we have Gristle and Bones, Seven Delectable Tales of Terror. So this is the old Forsaken uh, edition. I don't think this edition is around anymore, which is the same because this is an awesome cover. This was also the first of his books that I read. And I think I noted in my review at the time that it was like, it's one of the first times I've come across an indie writer who I think can rival Stephen King at times in the way they write. So, uh, so yeah, that was an interesting little read. Here we have Salvage. This is a ghost story sort of set in uh, Canada because he's a Canadian author. And uh, there's basically like a ghost town beneath a lake. And we kind of look into different characters' backstories. Here we have The Method. This is another sort of thriller, I suppose. The, the tagline here is Love is Pain. And this is about kind of uh, a couple who are going through a rough patch and they go away to this retreat where somebody's teaching the method. And we start to find out what the method is. And it's a bit brutal. Here we have Video Nasties, which is a collection of short stories. They're all kind of horror themed. This actually, the cover ties into the, the final story with these tentacles and stuff. And uh, yeah, pretty good collection of short stories. I read this just after reading a Stephen King collection actually and even said then that this had a slight edge over the King for me. Uh, they're not all great as you will find with any short story collection but the majority of them were definitely worth reading. And here we have Womb and uh, as you can see there's a placenta on the front and a coat hanger on the back that'll probably give you a good idea what this is about. Uh, this is kind of yeah, I mean, there's a quote on the front here by Matt Shaw, author of Sick Bastards, who says, Trust me when I say this is messed up. I will uh, read you the blurb here. I did enjoy this, actually. It was good. It wasn't... If anything, I was hoping it was going to be bloodier and gorier, but that just says a lot about me rather than about Ralston, doesn't it? The lonely motel holds many dark secrets, and room six just might possess the worst of them all. Angel knows a lot about pain. His mother died in this room. He's researched its history. He's come back today to end it, no matter the cost, once and for all. Prostitute Shyla believes the stories Angel tells her can't be true. Secrets so vile, you won't want to let them inside you. 
But the lonely motel doesn't forget. It doesn't forgive. And it always claims its victim. So yeah, Duncan Ralston there. And here we have Playing With Fire and Humble Pie. These are two Gordon Ramsay books. Just two volumes of autobiography. Uh, I just went through a phase a while back when I was watching a lot of cooking programs and Ramsay seems to have led an interesting life. And yeah, they were reasonably well written. I'm sure he didn't actually write them. I'm sure he had a ghostwriter, but whoever the ghostwriter was did a good job. So yeah, if you're interested in Gordon Ramsay, check them out. If not, don't. All right, up next we have two books by Andy Riley. So, oh dear. So we have The Bumper Book of Bunny Suicides and Great Lies to Tell Small Kids. He's basically a cartoonist and a humorist, and these are, you know, funny enough. Uh, again, the Bumper Book of Bum Bunny Suicides. You might have heard of Bunny Suicides. Let me tilt this a bit. My tripod's playing up, sorry. Anyway, next up we have Odium by Claire C. Riley. I got her to sign it as well. I met her at the Second City signing in Birmingham. This is a, a zombie novel. And yeah, at some point I might read some more of her stuff. We'll see. All right, then we have my small collection of Rick Riordan. So I have Magnus Chase and the Sword of Summer. This is an ARC as well. Really cool cover. Uh, Heroes of Olympus, The Blood of Olympus. And then Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. And yeah, I mean, I'm not the biggest... Riordan fan. By the time I discovered him, I, I'd kind of already gone past the age at which I think I would have enjoyed his books the most, you know? Alright, then we have Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels by Guy Ritchie. This is literally the screenplay for the movie. Love the movie, so I, I saw this at a car boot sale and thought I'd definitely have to pick that up. We have Undead Obsessed, Finding Meaning in Zombies by Jessica Robinson. So she was an author with Book Trope. I actually interviewed her to get... Uh, some thoughts for my novel, Meat, as well. And basically, this is like a non-fiction book about all the research she did to perfect the zombies in her own stories. So she also writes under the pen name uh, Pembroke Sinclair. And here we have The Rock Says by The Rock with Joe Layden. This was before even he started going by Dwayne Johnson. And this is just his autobiography. Obviously, it's super outdated now because it ends like before he got into movies and stuff. So while he was a wrestler and really goes into his younger years when he was like a pro footballer and stuff. And yeah, I just thought it was interesting, especially well, it's one that I've got left over from when I was a kid, you know? Okay, so next up we have Presentation and Communication Skills by Karen Rollins. You can probably tell just from the way this book looks, it's an old one. It wasn't very relevant in today's day and age, and I don't really know why I got it. I think I just got it cheap somewhere, and then just felt compelled to read it, because I'd bought it. Here is The Startup Coach by Carl Reader. It doesn't actually have his name on it, but I just remember it was Carl Reader from when I was being a Dane reader. And uh, again, this is another non-fiction, businessy type book. Here we have, And then God created the Middle East and said, Let there be breaking news by Carl Remarks. And this is another kind of humorous, cartoony book. Uh, but it takes on, you know, the Middle East, religious wars, suicide bombers, all that kind of stuff. But, um... I'm pretty sure it's own voices, so it works. It works all right. Okay, then we have a couple of war books. So we have All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remark, and this is actually one of the one of the, what I think is the most powerful books I've ever read, and it's certainly my favourite war book. And it has the unique distinction of being banned in Germany. For, oh no, it isn't anymore. But it was banned in Germany for being anti-German and banned in. Poland for being pro-German. That was it. I must have read this at uni uh, university because I've got some sites written down here. Read Gertrude Stein from the module reader. That's my note there. And uh, here is, uh, speaking of university actually, I was recommended this by my poetry lecturer. This is Holocaust by Charles Reznikov and this is just really stunning poetry but about the Holocaust. It's uh, just definitely one to read. Speaking of uni, again we have K.O. Rubin, 10 Days and Other Short Stories, and also Athens. Uh, he was a guy who was on my university course. I actually didn't think much of these. Uh, I would say now they're probably a little bit subpar for like a self-published book. But at the time I'd never really read indie stuff, so I thought they were really subpar. But I think I was probably even a bit harsh there. Here we have An Unkindness of Ravens, a book of collective nouns by Chloe Rhodes. So this is basically just a list of the different collective nouns we use for things. So uh, isn't it a murder of crows and various other things. And uh, yeah, it's just a little non-fiction thing, but fairly enjoyable. One for you if you love language. We have Anne Rice, Interview with a Vampire. I actually only read this about six months ago now. I think I saw the movie when I was a kid. I actually watched it like through the crack in the doorway when my, I think my dad was watching it. 
But uh, yeah, pretty much enjoyed this one. It's sort of a horror classic with sort of a bit of romance and erotica thrown in, I suppose, as well. And here we have Man's Best Friend by Rickard and Rickard, Scarlet and Sophie Rickard. And this is just like a graphic novel made by, I think, two sisters. And uh, I don't really remember it, to be honest, but it's pretty cute. And here we have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I picked this up because obviously it was a booktube darling. It was all right. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it, but I haven't continued with the series and probably won't. Okay, next up we have Student Life, a survival guide by Natasha Rowe. And this is just a non-fiction book I bought before I went off to uni just to, you know, make sure I survived, I guess. And it was alright for what it was, I'm sure it's probably pretty out of date now. I mean, this was a fourth edition though, and it's also got the UCAS logo on it, so uh, for, for you Americans, UCAS are like the, I think it's the University and Colleges Administration System or something. It's what you apply for university through. So if they've endorsed it, it's got to be good, you know? Here we have The Trouble with Parallel Universes, new writing from Roehampton, so this is, I just kind of can't count this as under Roehampton University. So again, it's from, by my alma mater, and it's just writing by some of the different students on the courses. And uh, I thought it was a nice way to support the uni, you know? Here we have John Ronson, The Psychopath Test, and this is basically looking into what makes a psychopath, how we treat psychopaths, you know, our perceptions of, as a society of what a psychopath is and all of that stuff. I did enjoy this one. Uh, it kind of took me a little while to get through it, but I probably will read some more, some more John Ronson in the future. Sally Rooney, Conversations with Friends. I read this one for the Young Writer of the Year Awards. I sat on the shadow panel, so me and a couple of other bloggers, we picked our own winner. This was my least favourite book of the lot, and actually it's probably one of my most hated books of the year. It's just a bunch of awful people doing awful things and having awful conversations, and I, I don't really... From that, I'm like, I'm not going to read Sally Rooney again, and I don't understand the hype, but whatever. Uh, here we have Kyla Ross, Jilted Love, A Trinity of Wicked Tales. This is like a self-published sort of mini three short stories collection. Uh, I don't particularly remember it, to be honest. I think they might have had uh, some erotica leanings, but who knows. Here we have Coming Alive by Ruth K. Ross, The Journey to Re-Engage Your Life and Career. And I believe this was one that I was sent. Again, another one of these sort of non-fiction, self-help, businessy books. Eh, it is what it is. And that brings us on to the end of this video, which is my Harry Potter collection, or my J.K. Rowling collection. So we'll just go through. We have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This is like the comic relief little book version, as opposed to the movie screenplay, which I don't have and I haven't seen and I don't really care about, to be honest. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Here we have Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling, John Tiffany and Jack Thorne. Uh, my other half actually went to see this the other day. In fact, she, she got me this t-shirt there, this Slytherin t-shirt, so thanks, Bex. Then we have Harry Potter and the Death of the Hallows. These are obviously all alphabetical order, so that explains why they're not in series order. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, which is probably my least favourite one. Harry Potter and the Order, order of the Phoenix. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which is probably my favourite one. Quidditch Through the Ages, which is another one of the little comic relief books. And then here I also have The Casual Vacancy, which I believe I read in one day, like non-stop pretty much, as part of, I was doing a readathon, a 24-hour readathon, and I read for 24 hours straight. It was tiring. So yeah, there we have it. That is the end of this instalment of my bookshelf tour. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. <laughs> what am I doing here? Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.